All right. This is John Reed of Ditonomica, and I have a guest that I've never had before, but it should have happened a long time ago. Let's be honest. I got Helena. I don't even have to pronounce your last name and screw it up. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, John, for having me. And I'm Yelena Perfilova from uh, Boring Enterprise Nerds. And, yes. Uh, yeah. Cool. Excited to be here. And you are you're a longtime SAP developer. Yeah. Uh, you're also an outspoken community member with a reputation for a little bit of pot stirring. Uh oh. Are we right? Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. I think we're right about that. We are at ASUG Tech Connect. Yeah. And we are in the, I think, the final day. So this is sort of a review podcast. And Tech Connect is one of the events that have kind of emerged in the sort of so called new tech ed tour. Mm -hmm. This event is sort of a cross between more higher level decision makers, but also some developers. And you had a well-attended developer session today, which I want to talk about because that was really interesting. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, uh, I, I did a session for developers. Uh, my partner, Paul Moderman, unfortunately could not uh, be here. Shout out uh, to but, Paul. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Paul. <laughs> get, get well soon, please. Um, and uh, it was an uh, what is called unfiltered conversation, and we intentionally wanted to have just a sort of ask me anything format session where we can have a conversation with developers about their experiences, what are their hopes and dreams, or maybe biggest questions and frustrations. So it was no slides, pretty yeah. much session, just getting people in the room together and uh, talking. And unsurprisingly, Clean Core was a very hit pro uh, kind of subject with the group that we happened to be there. People had some pretty strong words to say about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, and that was really interesting, too, because I think partially because it was the last day, people maybe a little bit of a, yeah. a, a kind of hangover from the week, like it started out pretty slow, but, you mm -hmm. know, people were chiming in but it didn't have that like dynamic feeling yeah but when you hit on clean core yeah everyone's just like per perked up all so of that's a sudden. really interesting yeah. right like that that topic really cuts to the heart yeah. of like both like concerns maybe also possibilities but that's really the lightning rod yeah. issue is yeah 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 it's uh very, very controversial yeah definitely and uh what i what I kind of noted, and not just from session, but also from talking to developers afterwards, that there is a lot of disconnect between SCP messaging and what is actually happening in the boots on the ground mm -hmm. demographic with actual developers. Uh, because many times this clean core message is received by, let's say, IT managers or people who are in higher up positions who don't really deal with development and they somehow hear, oh, clean core is something we should be doing. And then without even giving it much thought, they go into their organizations and they're like, oh, we need to do clean core. And to developers, it's like, well, whoop whoop to do. It's, it's as if we didn't know all along that <laughs> modifications were bad, that that was a known fact. And now, this strange message kind of making its rounds through SAP marketing to managers and somehow trickling down to developers. Um, I think that circle is not very productive, to be honest. And on the developer side, there is, I hesitate to call it resentment, but I struggle to find better words mm -hmm. towards SAP kind of doing this to us mm -hmm. because I wasn't. SAP session about clean core and half of it is was, well, you're preaching to the choir here. I don't mind doing your clean core, but are you enabling us to do that? That, that is, I think, a question that still remains for larger part and answer by SAP or the answers are just not really what's relevant. Yeah, I want to get further into that discussion. Mm -hmm. And I, I also thought and I'll touch on this a bit later too, but I think we run the risk of sort of the same thing happening with AI and not just from mm -hmm. SAP, but inside of companies. Has, I don't think the audience caught on to my remark about that today, but I do think they're going to face this, which is this pressure of yeah. like, oh, you can achieve all these efficiencies with AI, <laughs> yeah. you know, generating code. Yeah. Where are my efficiencies? Yeah. You know, and I think it's going to be 
again, another feeling of a, of a, of a something that might be useful, but it's going to feel like it's imposed yeah. rather than like, yeah. like trusting the developer, but also like you said, giving them tools they really need. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think that affects a little bit of the energy and morale of the discussion, unfortunately. Yeah. So hopefully we can find our way through that. But I want to step back though, because mm -hmm. I think, I think it's valuable for the listener to have a little bit of insight into how you have emerged as a really vocal presence in the, in the community, because you also work on projects and you have all of that, yep. but you've always been driven by this, I think, a sort of a passion for community involvement, which I, is it safe to say can sometimes be a little love-hate, right? Um, yeah. But what, what drives that for you? Um, I, I would say to me, it may be started with getting something from community first, because when I started with uh, SAP development, that was a long time ago, and it was also the beginning years of SAP community, which was called SDN at that time. Right. Um, and of course, I went to that nice website and I found answers to some questions that I had. For example, I posted one of my first questions there and people just came came back with amazing answers that are really helpful. So after a while, just getting something from it, I thought, okay, I think maybe maybe I should contribute something. And I started with just answering questions for others because that's what others did to me. So it was kind of um, pay, pay, it, pay it backwards, if you will, pay it back to the community. And uh, then next step was when one of the um, founding uh, persons of the community, Marilyn Pratt, I'm sure John, you, oh, you know yeah. Marilyn well. So she actually reached out to me um, I got a phone call, believe it or not, from Marilyn once when I posted about the first SAP community migration. It was back in 2012 when they uh, changed from SDN developer network to SCN SAP community network to kind of engage bigger communities and just developers. So there are some frustrations around that and Marilyn reached out to me personally. And you know how sometimes there is a saying as an introvert, um, some extrovert found me and adopted me. <laughs> Is that how I have any friends? So very similar situation maybe happened with Marilyn and myself. And it's not just me. I know Marilyn discovered many other people. She's really great person, uh, community-minded. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's how I got involved with, with some help from other people. And then gradually just more encouragement, quiet encouragement sometimes from others. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how, that's how we ended up here. How we ended up like yeah. creating a monster. <laughs> no, but no, it's funny too. Cause if anyone, if anyone is like, oh my God, this conversation, blame Marilyn, man. Cause <laughs> yes, Marilyn's absolutely. like a big reason why I, mm -hmm. I sort of got further yeah. involved as well. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting how just a desire to, to kind of pay it forward for the help you received. And yeah. then. But I think over time, what happened, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is I think you started to realize that you could have an important voice that for whatever reason, you're willing to say things mm. that other people aren't willing to say. And that, that becomes important in a community yeah. like this. And yeah. so you've kind of sort of embraced that, you know, and willing to take the heat sometimes too, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, somewhat maybe advantage situation because uh, I have just nothing to lose. There are some people in communities who cannot speak up, like, for right. example, people who maybe work for SAP or maybe people who are just not in a position to speak up openly for whatever reason. Um, and I hope that I can just use my position of being, I can, I can say anything, well, not really anything, but anything reasonable. And I'm not going to get fired for it, literally. Um, I think it's an advantage that that would be a waste not to use. And That's one thing I picked up on over the years, too, working with so many enterprise communities, is that a lot of customers have concerns that don't get surfaced because yeah. they don't feel comfortable yeah. speaking. Oh, yeah. And even vendors that claim to listen to their customers, there is an undercurrent still where customers are conscious of this and they don't necessarily want to step out into the limelight. And so I think someone like yourself, you've always been able to amplify those voices. And 
I would love to actually have a podcast on kind of what happened to the SAP community and where do we go from oh, here. Yeah. But we're not going to do yes. that today. <laughs> not today. Uh, sorry, folks. I know it would, some of you would lo- probably really enjoy that. And we could get into the whole SAP mentor saga, but we're not doing that today. But, but I do think it's interesting in the context of this show, because one of the things I will give ASUG credit for is their willingness to kind of bring in outspoken outside perspectives like yours and mine yeah. and not just stick with the classic like here's the partners yeah. and here's SAP yeah. you know they bring us in and they want to mix it up a little bit and I think that I, I give them a lot of credit because I think that helps to bring this open tone and you saw this the last couple of days of people honestly discussing their challenges so that, that's one of the things I like about this event yeah yeah it's, it's definitely appreciated and I I don't say it just because ASAC invited us. I sincerely appreciate their support and what they're doing for SAP customers um, with whatever powers they, they have. So, yeah. And anyway, uh, for those of you that want to follow more deeply some of these things, I encourage you to pick up on the boring enterprise nerds. And I was really glad to see the emergence of that because I think, you know, there's a great history in the SAP community of of groups like the Enterprise Geeks that kind of formed, you could think like culture Mm -hmm. around SAP. And I think you've kind of succeeded in kind of starting to do that again around this topic. So feel free to dig into that, folks, if you want to get more into those topics. But anyway, as for for this show, what what are you sort of your, before we get back into your session, what are your sort of general impressions of what you saw and learned this week? Um, I th- just in general about the event, yeah. it's great to see many more people. I've heard it's about twice the size of last yeah. year's event, which is great, I think, progress, um, honestly. And I think it's also good that it is collocated with TechEd. Also, obviously, my own personal preference would be to have more like designated maybe TechEd or designated conference. But I mean, it, it is what it is. I think we're still, as society, still recovering from some of the events of the past. And uh, it, is, it is definitely great progress. So I think as far as path, we are, I think, on the right trajectory there. Um, so some notes, as usual, customer sessions, I think, are the best at all of these events. Even at the mm-hmm. TechEd, when it was, there was customer sessions, they were also always great content. Because then you hear the real war stories, or you can even hear some of uh, failure stories, maybe, or not so success stories, which are, which are I think, the best, to be honest. Um, there were quite a few SAP sessions. I think some of those sessions, at least some of what I went to, they reflected maybe state of slight confusion within SAP, maybe, where some announcements were made but maybe the product is not really quite there mm. or there isn't maybe perfect clarity even like within organization, like what exactly are we kind of, what are we doing with this? Um, so there were some kind of hit or miss sessions. Um, s- some of them were great, uh, also presented by SAP. So some some great, great content, but it, it might be case with any event where, you know, you you miss some, You some of them are great, some of them. Not so great. Um, I really like the energy at this event as well. And if I may add, uh, from my perspective as woman in IT, at TechEd, every year you go to TechEd in Las Vegas, there would be a line to the men's room and right. never a line in the ladies' room. Yeah. And this event is the first time when people just were leaving the keynote, big, big hall of keynote, and ladies' room was full. So my my restroom index for this event is off the charts, yeah. which, is, which is great, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things I would say about this event is you're right about customer presentations, but I think in general, the sessions that work well here are the ones where the presenters engage the audience because the, the viewpoints from the audience were strong and people were mostly very willing to... to yeah to raise their hands and say things. Yeah. And, and you really get a sense of a contrast between where SAP says things are and where customers are. And I want to emphasize that doesn't mean that customers disagree with the direction mm-hmm. that SAP has charted out. 
But I think there there's definitely a reality check for SAP and for SAP leaders who were at this show to kind of see, okay, this is where customers are at. And I think that's really vitally important. And yeah. um, one thing I'll also say is that I think the AI part of the conversation here was just about right in the sense that it has not dominated the conference. And I think that's appropriate yeah. because right now, even though customers did attend the AI sessions, we went to a really good jewel session on the first day together. Mm -hmm. And then there's other sessions that were well attended. There's interest in the topic, but right now I think it's fair to say for most customers, there's more pressing issues yeah. on the table, right? Yeah. With the S4 HANA migrations and the deadlines around yeah. and the maintenance and the clean core discussions yeah. that are really kind of hitting. So that's my impression is that we the AI thing was just about right here, which was yeah, there's interest and we're going to talk about it, but we're not going to let it dominate the entire yeah. agenda. There was, yeah, diversity of content was, yeah. was I thought, very, very good here. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So let's get back into a little bit of this this clean core thing, because I think that that really cuts to the heart of a lot of issues. So are you kind of saying that you do kind of agree with the clean core direction, but you just don't like some of the ways it's been handled? Or how are you, what would be your position? So if I were to summarize, and again, yeah, it's mostly my personal position, but I did, while talking to others, I heard similar sentiment. I think everyone is pretty much on board with the idea, and I do not disagree with it on principle myself, not at all. I, I f wholeheartedly agree that it's, it's a great idea to do enhancements, customizations, however, through the appropriate ways. i completely on board with that. What I have problem with is SAP basically telling us, like, you need to do clean core, but not giving developers enough tools to do that, and basically not releasing APIs that should be released, I think. Because um, it, and the message then comes across as slightly condescending, because I was shaking my head through the session about clean core. It's like, wow, as if we didn't know that we are not supposed to do that. But what are we supposed to do then? Because our, cust our business customers, they want us to do things that SAP does not do as part of standard. They have certain processes they want to run. They want to automate certain things. And we have to do it for them. Especially as consultant, I deal with it a lot more when I was working internally for customers and you have more sway maybe to say, hold on a second, it's a good idea, but if we do that, imagine our long-term cost or imagine what type of effort it's going to take and long-term impact on maintenance and everything. In a consulting, there is a little bit less of it. And it's not because I'm a greedy consultant that just wants to take your money and give you whatever and settle you up with, with long-term maintenance costs. is not at all like that, but I'm less in a position to decline because that's, that's the purpose of consulting job. I do what, what you hired us to do. Mm -hmm. So there is some- Can I just ask you about sure, that yeah, though? Yeah. Because don't, don't you think that, that part of a, this is an interesting discussion on yeah. what a consultant really is. Isn't part of a good consultant being an advisor to yes. say, yeah. look, like, I'll do this for you if you really want it, yeah. but my recommendation yep. is like a little bit different. Like, isn't that part of what a good consultant we, does? We do it every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time on every our project, almost yeah. on every project, it's like that. Sometimes I'd say, I do not advise you to do that, mm -hmm. but sometimes my hands are tight because right. the customer That's what is the customer like, wants. Right. yeah, I, I maybe hear you or do not hear you, decline to hear you or right. whatever. We want this. Yeah. This right. is, and then you go this is, right. exactly. Yeah. And sometimes, honestly, I even write comments about this in the program because they want to warn potential, like future mm -hmm. um, developers who would be maintaining this code that look, we tried really hard to look for something else. Mm -hmm. We couldn't. If future developer, you find something better, then maybe do, do better, but we, ju we just couldn't. So, and that's unfortunately the reality of ABAP development world. What we have, tools that we have right now, APIs that we have right now, that's what we have. That's what we need to work with today, not like in five years or whatever. We need to develop, to deliver results for our business customers. 
and they expect us to do that by however, how many, any means necessary sometimes. And this is really interesting to me because I spent a lot of time in the cloud ERP mid market with other vendors and talking a lot to other customers. Mm-hmm. And, and through all of the, that work over all these years at Diginomica, I've really become, cause, cause a big part of my story is like still being connected to SAP, but, but having a much broader purview. And I think that's honestly helped me a lot to see the pros and cons of what SAP does better. And I become pretty sold on the overall business value of, of sort of what you might call multi-tenant SaaS with, with an extension model, an API model versus like over-customizing software, because I've seen so many of the benefits of easier upgrades and easier absorption of new functionality and all of that stuff. And, and, and quote, unquote, less technical than now having said that, People in that industry have a tendency to idealize those things and claim that there's no in- integration issues and no testing issues. And that's, of course, bullshit. It's not a perfect system. I do think it's generally a better system, but I do acknowledge that one size doesn't fit all in this thing. And there are, in the SAP world, for example, some very sophisticated organizations with IT. And when you're dealing with sophisticated organizations, that want to call their own shots around how they manage clouds and development and stuff, I think they should be able to do that. And if that includes customizations that yeah. are a little dirty in the core, I think to some extent, if they have a good rationale for yeah. it, that's their call. Yeah. But what I think is really interesting about what you've said is, by and large, what you're saying is that, because I used to encounter a lot of resistance in this topic amongst the developer community and SAP, but if the if the developer community by and large accepts the premise of the clean core at this point, then I think you're correct that it puts the onus back on SAP to listen yeah. and to say, okay, you buy in, but you have an issue with how we're enabling it. Yeah. They need, then SAP needs to solve that, right? Because yeah. the developers are saying, look, we agree, but. Yeah. So what is the but? Like, What kinds of tools would make this better? And uh, I just had a great conversation with a group of developers, and I was surprised how we immediately agreed on this, that uh, SAP keeps saying, oh, if you need something, then we need to get get feedback from you, which is a valid point. Uh, But the way how they choose to gather that feedback, it's simply not working. And we have been saying it for a while, but uh, seems to be falling on deaf ears mostly. So... What SAP invited us to do is you have to go to their influence website or they call it CPI or something where you have to register, you have to find the right place to put your suggestion in. And then when six partners or customers agree to the same suggestion, so they vote for it or whatever happens, then SAP will deliver it, which, yeah, that's the one way to do it. But what developers had in mind is more like well we're developers first of all why do you need why do you need separate website and that requires sid most likely to go in and and register there and do something and then wait for six other people to do the same thing you have for example you have api hub already which which was renamed i keep forgetting the current name but it's api.sap.com you can you put a feedback button right there it's mm. a website you should be able to do that so instead of six customers, how do you say, well, if 100 developers tell you that they would like that, then mm-hmm. maybe we should do that. So or, what, would or, be, what would be an example of something that would make clean core concepts easier for developers to manage? What would be an example of the I, type of thing that would help? Th- so, so two things. First of all, you actually need those released APIs. You need those replacements if that's what you want us to use. When there is just nothing to replace it with, what are we talking about? There is right. nothing to talk about. Then if those replacements exist, instead of just talking about, you know, from high horse about principles, etc., you just give people very simple guide. You used to do X, now you do Y. But I think when you try to do that, it becomes very quickly apparent that there is no why for many cases. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's why I think maybe that very simple guide from X to Y have not materialized just yet. Because what, one good example was when SAP went ahead with uh, ABAP tools on Eclipse. And there was a really great guide in um, SAP documentation, which was 
exactly like that. Oh, in SAP GUI, you used to do this in ABAP Editor, and now in Eclipse, you do that to achieve the same result. Here is your new way. And that was super helpful to experienced developers because that's exactly how, how we operate. Okay, we have lots of experience on the left side. Now we need to move to the right side. How do we do that? Well, here is a very simple guide. Mm. There is nothing like that, to my knowledge, for clean core. There are some guides, but they are non-specific like that. They do not, do not tell you like, for example, oh, like your sales user exit can be replaced with this body or mm. something along those lines. So your position would essentially be that SAP can take a step back from the, the sort of sales pitch or emphasis on you know, why clean core matters and kind of take a step back from that and instead broach a conversation on how can we support developer teams yes. to get there, yep. like that they need to kind of shift the conversation yeah. and make it easy for that yeah. to happen. Yeah. yeah, because like, okay, we agree. Now, how do we get there? Mm. That's interesting because that is a step forward that the agreement has been reached, but it does put the onus on SAP to then shift. And I don't know about SSID, but maybe a podcast will work. Um, then you won't have <laughs> yeah, to do that uh, yeah. ideation exercise. Maybe just yeah. sounding off in a podcast will help a little bit. Uh, that's interesting. It, it, it's a little bit of a parallel with what I've seen with AI this fall, which is like my thing around vendors really overselling AI as opposed to explaining how it can help, you know, what the pros and cons yeah. are and really like... Like, it's like, do you realize the audience has already bought in, right? Like, they realize this isn't blockchain. This is yeah. something that is real, but they still want to understand. Like, they might not always want to use it, but they want to understand more on what the pros and cons are, what the mistakes customers make are, what the challenges are. Yeah. And the, instead of getting the sales pitch, that doesn't need <laughs> yeah. to happen yeah. anymore. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. We're, we're sold. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's Move on. Yeah, that's really interesting. So there were other really interesting things I thought in your session because the other, the thing I kind of picked up on in addition to the clean core controversy touching a cord is maybe a feeling that developers uh, are a little overwhelmed by everything on their plate. You put on this pie chart that had everything from like all the hats that developers yeah. wear, right? Like yeah. from solution architect, enterprise architect, like process expert consultant like with all the process analysis and mining tools and stuff uh so that's a challenge too right is yeah. for is like how you handle all the stuff that's being put on your plate and all the different roles yeah yeah there is there is definitely a lot expected from uh, sap developers who are still mostly ABAP developers i would say these days and um uh, and, and I think it maybe affects disproportionately people working at customers in customer internal IT because mm. very frequently they are really strapped. They, their teams, they have seen layoffs. Their teams have, been, have become smaller, but their workload has not, been, has not become smaller. It's, it's increased, if anything. And they are kind of confused sometimes. They don't get maybe support or financing or even um, or even encouragement from management or business. Um, and it, it's, it's actually has been going on, I think, in SAP ecosystem for a while because uh, traditionally ABAP developers knew much more about non-development and non-ABAP things than, let's say, just regular developer in JavaScript or some other language because I, I, I think those what I would call like general purpose developers, they are mostly focused on the purely development, let's say writing code, but ABAPers were expected to know how to run transactions in SAP, how processes flow. So there is a lot of kind of baggage that mm. we started with and it, it never, so our scope of ABAP, it never shrunk, it never be became smaller. Mm. It, it ever expanding, it's like horizon, that, that we can never reach. It just gets farther and farther. And there's definitely a lot of frustration, I think, amid developers about that. And also sometimes related to that, um, many developers are looking for direction. If you look at questions out there on social media, it's like, what do I learn? Where, what, what do I learn so that I stay relevant? We hear about AI, AI is, is it coming for our jobs? Is it not coming for our jobs? There's so much going on. 
what should I invest in? And I don't think there is a clarity on that mm-hmm. at all. So, so if, you, if you were giving advice to a team of developers at this conference that wants to go home and, and be more effective given everything that's on their plate, what would, what would you say? I think at this point, you really need to look at what is specifically practical for you. It's I'm pretty much given up on giving generic advice. Right. Because every time you do that, it would be too generic. Um, I mean, as yeah. A si- as a yeah. side note, um, a former Diginomica colleague that you know well, Dennis Howlett, mm-hmm. always hated the term best practices. And <laughs> I think it was like only one year into Diginomica when we had a talk about an iconic was like, you know what, you're totally right about that. And I haven't used that term in a single article since yeah. then. I can't. Yeah. And I've grown to loathe the term, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's still interesting to think about, like, how, how do you take this and use it, right? Because one of the things I'm obsessed with with shows is like, okay, you had a great time at a show. Can we really afford that at this day and age? Mm-hmm. Is, isn't it about taking something back with you? So I am kind of curious about Okay, yeah, one size doesn't fit all, but what do you think people should do? Uh, I think, so if, if, let's say, if you're an ABAP developer and you have not learned about OData development, and it can be either old-fashioned OData development in ECC, or it could be ABAP Rep, ABAP Cloud, whatever, you definitely need to do that. But I think it brings you to the um, modern, minimal level of software software development knowledge in SAP space. So mm-hmm. there is certain baselines that everyone needs to reach. But beyond that, it's really, uh, I think for the individual, it has more to do with their own individual preferences because people are asking like, do I need to learn Fiori? Well, are you interested in that? If yes, then you should. If not, there are plenty of subjects that you can learn more about. Um, as far as taking something from the conference, I think it also has to do with, again, practical application of that knowledge. When, when TechEd was a big event in Vegas and I was working at a, at a customer, I would always go to some sessions that were more practical, more like down to earth about some mm-hmm. specific things that I might be able to use right away or very soon. But I also went to some sessions that were more like cutting edge, something very unusual. And I think that's a good mix for everyone. But there needs to be some things that you can practically apply. Um, I think there was good mix of that at this event, um, of things that you can come back at least and think about, oh, maybe I should learn more about this. And for ABAPR specifically, I think using tools like ATC and other tools I saw in the session it was a big revelation to many. Mm. It was surprising to me because I've known about this for a while, but many people apparently like had no idea. So I think that's yeah, that's a good good opportunity to come here and learn about things that have existed for a while. Yeah, I think my contributions to your advice would be that it never gets old to get better at talking with business users yeah. and figuring out how to have conversations that don't get defensive, right? Because both sides can get a little defensive at times, right? (laughs) Like the ABAP developer feels put upon by business requirements that don't make sense um, given the current software. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And and the business person can feel, you know, a little bit of of that whole, sometimes the IT person can come off a little strong too. So I, I think learning how to pull requirements out of business users and really have that good conversation yeah. i i think that never gets old to me no matter what the technology you're yeah, talking yeah, about it's definitely. just you know just human relationships really yeah. and so so i i talked for a long time about like the end of the cubicle coder and to me a big part of that is you exist in a human context so i think that's big but then the other thing my other unsolicited thing is just about ai because i feel that there's going to be a lot of executive pressure around are you adopting ai code generation if you're a developer Mm -hmm. and i think developers just need to get out in front of that and figure out to what extent can these tools help to what extent can they cannot so that like for example let's say that you're a pretty senior abop developer and you Mm -hmm. experiment with these code generation tools either saps or non-sap and you find that actually it takes longer to debug the new code 
than not for you, but maybe you find that it does help a junior teammate to get started, but then, Mm. you know, whatever. I think being able to be out in front of that conversation is important so that if someone comes to you and says, hey, can you use this or that? You say, well, actually, we've already worked on this and here's how it will help me, but not very much, but it will help this other person more so that people get more satisfied with that. Because otherwise, I think they're going to come in and just be like, why aren't you more efficient with these tools? Because everyone's reading these headlines saying like, this is going to, you know, automate development and all this crap, yeah. which is totally, in my opinion, overhyped. But, but, you know, I do think there are times where in some cases it will be useful, especially, I think, talking with a friend of mine who works for one of the big SIs, he's talking about situations, for example, where ABAPS, this isn't as much of an issue, but certain languages that might be deprecated either inside your organization or in general, and you have all this back catalog of stuff and you want to update it, maybe code generation will really help you to get a leg up or something. But I think it's good to be proactive about that because I think you will get pressure from the outside on that. That's my opinion. Yeah. And in general, we always recommend developers to just be curious about things. And I know that SAP pushing Joule a lot, and they were talking about Joule for ABAP, et cetera. But you don't have to wait for Joule. You can go to ChatGPT right. today and ask it to generate, well, ALV report. It's a good use case. For example, the one that I tried just recently was, um, okay, I need just a boilerplate temporary test program to fill in some table with data. Mm. And I also want to have ALV output of the result. So I gave this to chat GPT and the first version was, wasn't really great. So I had to kind of poke it and probe it and uh, suggest like, oh, why, why don't you, you are using old function module, use something else. But I think if you, if you simply go and do that, you will understand how it works and how you can make it work better for you um, and just not be completely surprised when, like you said, John, right. your management is going to come to you and say, yeah. oh, you know, how about we start using AI right. here? You will, you would be better prepared for those conversations. Yeah, I think the conversation is going to go so much better if you can say, give real, a real honest view of like, yeah. we try these tools, here's what works, here's what doesn't, here's what needs improvement. Just a much more realistic conversation. I am curious about this in your own work, though, because... My guess is that you were probably initially pretty resistant to the hype around this, but that you probably did play around with it. So what are you finding? Like, does it accelerate your development (laughs) capabilities or is it more useful for like supplemental things? Like, does it help you personally in your coding? Yeah, I I mean, for for ABAPers, we all know that most of our time is spent to find what unreleased API we need to use to achieve business requirements. So that's majority of the time and not the actual writing of the code. Right. Uh, but I the would say- The code writing is a smaller part of exactly, the job, and, and that's why yeah. an ABAP space is just not really a huge selling point. But yeah. having said that, uh, when you simply need something boilerplate, like I just mentioned, or like ALV report, that's, I think, pretty boilerplate at this point, mm-hmm. um, you really can save a lot of time by just, having chat GPT or whomever, whichever yeah, your yeah. preferred solution, do do at least the first version for you. And I think people sometimes approach it wrongly. It's like all or nothing. It's like, right. oh, it didn't give me like perfect results, so screw this. That's it doesn't work. No, I mean it can give you a decent starting point and you can just file to the specification after that and just make adjustments that you need. It's uh yeah, but as as your helper there is no denying that they're definitely used for many AI tools. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I think I, I'm on a little bit of a parallel track with the writing side of it because mm. for me, since I've been writing is one of the few sort of inherent talents that I've ever had in life, <laughs> it doesn't do anything for me. Like, yeah. like, like if I generate a page of text and then try to rework it to my satisfaction, I'm better off starting with a blank screen. But you know, in fairness, I have met a lot of people who have found various writing benefits from these tools, yeah. um, you know, because for whatever reason, maybe English is a second language yeah. issues or, yeah. you know, other other just insecurities around putting words to a page or 
So I think it requires a little bit of an open mind around like that not everyone is going to derive the same type of value, but you can definitely bet that the experiments are are worth it just to try to stay a little bit ahead of yeah. the curve. I personally think that some of the strengths of these tools are 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 different than what is being advertised on stage. And so like so for example, like you know, you really have to bear down on what works and why. Like meeting summaries, yeah, that seems really cool because it's great at summarization, but you know, when I go to a meeting, sometimes the most important things are just very subtle things. Like yeah. like even the look on someone's face where you can tell that they're discouraged by the meeting. Like yeah, maybe AI can eventually pick up on some of the sentiment stuff, but it might even be just a little offhand comment that isn't really the core to the whole thing. So I think just really understanding the strengths of those things. And so I think that's a really big takeaway for me. And, um, and yet, I'll be honest with you, I don't think that's where people's heads are at at this show. I think mm. people are really more preoccupied with whatever is on their plate from yeah. that SAP is put on. So I, I really get this feeling that, that the impression I get is people are just close to being maxed out and they really need this information yeah. and they're feeling some pressure. So I'm really glad that they made it onto a plane to get down here because they clearly were getting that. And I thought the biggest thing was not just the information, but I would see these moments where people would connect with each other, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, two women in a session that I was at that are both in the beauty and cosmetics industry. Mm -hmm. And like five minutes ago, they didn't know each other. And now they're like swapping yeah. war stories. Yeah. I'm like, that's friggin' gold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if you're an event organizer, that is gold. And, and you, you know, one thing I just remember, I shamelessly overheard at lunchtime. So I was sitting next to a group of people and they were talking, oh, where is, where is Joe? Joe is nowhere here. And they said, well, Joe went back to his hotel because he didn't have any sessions, and he said, I will never get eight hours to try things that I just learned here when I go home. Mm. So Joe is essentially using this time here right now at the event, just not physical on location, but like he's done with the session, done some learning, and he just went to the hotel to straight up go and try hands-on some things. And I, I can totally relate to that mm. because... Um, yeah, how many people, John, did you see here with laptops all the time, like right. on their phones and clearly they're doing, they're working right. while they're here instead of just devoting time to learning. So in some cases, learning and spending time on it, it's a luxury yeah. that is not always available. So, but I'm glad that Joe really got his chance to spend this time and, yeah. and learn and apply knowledge uh, most importantly it's really kind of sad that we've reached that yeah. point but <laughs> yeah. because i think <laughs> depressing I think like, well well because like immersion time i think is so important that's something that developers and writers have in common you know that like in Diginomica, like one of my biggest struggles is f especially when i'm on the road is finding that more focused time to gather my thoughts and write. Yeah. and i think the same is probably yeah. true of almost all yeah. developers yeah. right is yeah. if you can't get that and it's kind Slow, of sad that yeah. more employers don't think about like how do we protect the windows, yeah. right? So quote unquote Joe, you know, but we persona Joe. I don't no, you know. not 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 his yeah. real name. I right, don't know. right. But that's kind of in a way too bad that that um that the employer doesn't see okay, yeah. Joe needs protected time yeah. to learn. But having said that, kudos to this individual for knowing that's yeah, what exactly. they needed to do, right? Exactly. Like so so hats off. Well, I think we learn a fair amount. But now we're at the point where we're going to lose the room. So any final thoughts for our listeners? Well, uh, come to the event next yep. year. And please continue uh, attending your ASAC chapter meetings or whichever events are available in your, in your area. Um, because um, if no one comes to those events, <laughs> they're not going to survive. People need to show up. And I think if anyone wants those events to continue, wants to be part of community, wants to learn and excel, just start showing up. That's, yeah. Cool. Well, f sorry we didn't get into the full community at SAP controversy, but 
maybe someday. But for now, we had a great discussion. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.